I feel like most of us can agree that invasive external telemetry is just bad and should be avoided at all costs. But what if I said that not all telemetry was inherently bad? Now, don't click off. I know one of you is going to do so. Wait a couple of seconds. What if I said we had locally self-hosted telemetry, the data never leaves my system, and it's completely open source? Now, I keep saying telemetry because I know it's going to trigger someone, but what this is is an activity tracker known as Activity Watch. This right here is the graphical dashboard. It shows you a graphical representation of how your day actually plays out. So the application that you're using, the websites you're going to, the types of work you're actually doing, if you have the plugin for it, then the editor language you're working with, the editor files you're going with, things like that. Basically showing you everything you're doing on your system, as well as tracking things like how often you're going AFK and just leaving your system on without actually doing anything. I'll get more into how this works in just a bit, but before we do that, if you want to go and run this, the easiest way to do so is by launching up AWQT, which is basically going to be a little applet that appears inside of your system tray up here. And from here, you can go and do things like open up the dashboard, as well as starting up the different modules. Now, these modules can be started up manually, and you don't have to go and open this part up, but this is going to be easier to manage. Now, with some versions of the application inside of KDE, AWQT doesn't seem to launch up properly. This may have something to do with the KDE libraries that are installed alongside the QT stuff, but I don't have KDE installed to actually test this, and it is a reported bug that is being worked on. Now, you may be wondering, okay, that's cool and all, but why would I ever want to go and track all this stuff I'm doing on my system? What at all is the purpose? Well, one of the things is habit detection and correction. So, while it's easy enough to notice things like, hey, I'm picking up my phone and checking Facebook every so often and doing things like that. When it's something more subtle, like, okay, I occasionally go and look at YouTube back and forth between doing things that I'm supposed to be doing. It's not always clear how much time you're actually wasting by doing that, but by having that actually being tracked, it gives you a much better representation of how much of your day you are actually wasting away. And if that's actually something that is worth addressing. Another great use case for this is if you do some contract work or you generally do some computer work where you need to submit some sort of timesheet. It's all well and good to say, okay, I'm working today from 9 till 5, but are you actually working the entire day, or did you take a half an hour break to watch some YouTube videos, then take an hour break for lunch, and then take a like 15 minute tea break? This makes it much easier to work out when you're actually working. The developers say they don't want businesses forcing people to run applications like this, but if you're running it on your own, I don't think that's really that big of a deal. Now, the way this works is actually fairly interesting. So I showed you there was these modules up here before. You can get a better look if we go into the raw data section, we can actually go and export all of the data. So the way this works is you have these individual modules that track different parts of your system. So the AFK watcher tracks when you're going AFK. The web Chrome watcher tracks anything you're doing inside of Google Chrome. The window watcher tracks your window titles. The Vim watcher tracks what I'm doing inside of Vim. And because these are their own separate modules, you can very easily go and write your own modules to go and say, track what you're doing in Spotify or track what you're doing on your Plex server, things like that. Obviously, whatever application or activity you want to track does have to have some sort of API or some way to get access to the data that you want to track. One toy example I just thought of is let's say you want to track what your general words per minute is. So you would track the input to your keyboard. Obviously, you want to work out when the user actually starts typing. So maybe once they press one key, you then assume after that they're going to press some more keys and then you can sort of calculate a words per minute. Not all of these modules are bundled with the application. So by default, you get the AFK module, the window module, and also the stopwatch module. Now the stopwatch module isn't actually a watcher. It's just treated as one of the other buckets of data. This basically just gives you access to a stopwatch in the application. But if you want to get the web Chrome one or the version for Firefox, or you want to get the one for Vim, or maybe you want to use something like Sublime instead, there is a link to the documentation where it actually has a list of all 
of the other watches that they know about. There might be other watches out there they don't know about, so you could have things like the VS Code Watcher, the JetBrains Watcher, things like this. Because all of this data is stored locally on your system, getting access to it is very simple. So if you go to the Export Bucket section, you can export all of the data buckets as JSON data, and then you can go and parse it in whatever way that you want to parse it. Now, there isn't actually a sync functionality, and I don't think an application like this should actually have one. So if you want to go and import all your data to a separate system, export all your data from whatever your original system was, and then go and import it with the import bucket section. However, syncing is a work in progress. Now, if you're worried about your data or for whatever reason you want to go and wipe it, you can go and delete individual buckets with the delete buckets drop down right here. Now, one thing that does slightly annoy me is there isn't a delete all button. There is an export all, so adding something somewhere on the screen would not be that difficult. I tried to find one and I'm 99% sure it doesn't exist. Now, my notes say this uses a SQLite database in the background. I can't remember where I actually found that, so I'm not sure if that's actually correct. But if you want to go and wipe the data, you could just go and delete the data from your system, and that would go and do that as well. I'll come back to this data in just a bit, but for now, I want to have a look at the main activity screen. So everything you see here can be customized. So even though we have the summary window browser and editor, these can all be completely changed, and what we see here can all be changed as well. If we go to the edit view section, we can go and remove anything we want and we can even go and click on this cog here and go and change to some other sort of data so we can make it the uh, the category tree or we could make this the category sunburst and have two of those on the screen we can't go and reorder stuff but the order that you place stuff on the screen by adding the visualization here is the order it's going to be I'm sure in a later update you will be able to move this around though and that actually will be really cool now one thing you also can't do is customize the colors of each of these categories. Now, this is actually coming in a future update. They already have a beta available for it. It's just not in the stable release. If we go and make a mistake, let's say we save this. If we go back to edit view and click restore defaults, it is going to take us back to the original layout the application has defined. So if you ever make any horrible mistakes, that's always there to recover. Now, this data you see in here is static. It's not going to do any live updates. I would like to see in a future version that actually being a thing that does happen. But for now, if you want to go and update the data, all you need to do is go click on the refresh button or just refresh your browser normally. And things like, say, Brave right here, as we can see, have a couple of extra seconds on them. Now, this application doesn't have any special way to detect what sort of applications are running. So it doesn't know if you're doing things like running a video player or running instant messaging. The way it does that is very, very simple. So if we go into the settings, what it does is basically regexes the window title. This application does have a lot of these categories defined by default, but you'll notice that, especially if you're not using super popular applications, a lot of them just won't be in here. So it's got things like Google Docs as one of its things for working. I'd never use Google Docs. I never actually use any of these, actually. It didn't have things like OBS and Olive, but if you want to go and add stuff in, Basically, I'm just doing a simple regex. You can make it far more complicated, but I'm just doing a switch here. So it's either OBS or Olive. If it's one of those, then it's going to be in this category. The one problem with these categories is this right here. I don't know how they managed to do this. These settings are only saved in your browser and will not remain if you switch browser. We are working on getting this fixed. Why is this data stored in your browser and not in the server for Activity Watch? If I go over to Firefox right now, you'll notice that none of these categories actually exist. I don't know how they made the application like that. You can also go back and review previous days, or you can go and look at the week overview, things like that. But one other exciting thing is if we go into the timeline section, this will show us a timeline of either like the past 15 minutes, the past 30 minutes, up to the past day. Now, there's one problem with this, and that is it's always going to show loading in here until you actually go and select a period to actually look at. What it should do is say there's no data to actually load, please select something. And rather than showing you like a general overview, this shows you a breakdown 
of every single event that you've done during whatever the period you've set actually is. We can go and zoom in and out on this section by just using our scroll wheel and hovering over any of these events in here is going to give you some information about the event. This for some reason is an unknown application, but if I hover over something like say Brave, that's gonna say, okay, this is Brave Browser and you were on odyssey.com. Because the data can be exported in JSON, you can go and parse the data however you want. But there is actually a query functionality built into ActivityWatch. Now, the problem with this is if we go click and see the documentation here, this takes us to a dead link. So, uh, that's, that's, that's quite helpful. I don't know where that's supposed to actually be located. And I have no idea how this query syntax is actually supposed to work. Now, if you'd like to install this yourself, there are binaries available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, as well as the Android Play Store. But on Linux, you can also install it from the AUR if you are using Arch Linux or some sort of Arch derivative. Now, do keep in mind that for some reason, there is an ActivityWatch-bin, and also there are individual packages for things like the AW server, the AW window, things like that. If you have this activity watch bin installed, any of the bundled modules will be clashing with any of those AW packages. This application is by no means an original concept, but a lot of the other alternatives have two very serious problems. Firstly, they have paywalls and a lot of them are also proprietary and I would never ever trust a proprietary application with this much data. That is incredibly dangerous. Plus, because they are proprietary, they're also not going to be self-hosted, so your data actually leaves your system. Never trust an application like that with that much data. The other problem is a lot of them seriously lack extensibility. Maybe you can have things like tracking new text editors, but in this, there is arbitrary extensibility that you can have. If you go and write an extension, you can track anything you want. I'm probably not going to keep this application around for any longer, but if you realize that you're wasting time doing things that you shouldn't be doing, this is a really good way to identify how much time you're actually wasting, and maybe there's somewhere that you didn't realize you're wasting so much time that you want to address. So that's going to be everything for me. Let me know your thoughts on this application in the comment section down below. And before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Donald, Logan, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, Carl, Mitchell, Will, Brennan, Chico, Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Josh, Peter, D, Stephen, Tees, through Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go and support work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, star, leave a pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays, where I live stream games twice a week. And this channel is also available over on Odyssey. So that's going to be everything for me, and I'm out.